Okay, here's another story I wanted to share with you. I this again, I I, I found this on BBC. Uh, apparently, there has been a fair amount of American reporting on the on the Google, uh, you know, reading your email and busting people for porn stuff. But the the BBC has this remarkable story about the Yazidi children. You ever heard of the Yazidi kids? These are children of uh, the Yazidi are people who live in um, in rural areas in little villages out in the middle of nowhere in Iraq. And Saddam Hussein protected religious minorities, right? He protected the Jews. He protected the Christians. He protect he kept the the Islamic sects apart. He was so uh, you know aggressive about this that there was not a single Al Qaeda person in his country ever. I mean, he, he, you know, he, he just did not want religious fanatics in his country. And, uh, and, 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 you know, this is not to portray Saddam Hussein as some sort of heroic good guy, but the fact of the matter is that the Yazidi people who believe, here's their, um, the, the principal divine figure, the, the, their their religion is based in uh, many faiths, including Zor- Zoroasterism. The principal divine figure, Malik Taus, the peacock angel, is the supreme angel of the seven angels who ruled the universe after it was created by God. Okay. So what has happened is that, that ISIS, the Islamic State in Iraq and Syria, these guys who were the uh, freedom fighters against uh, Bashar al-Assad in uh, Syria that we were funding and giving weapons to, and then they went into Iraq and decided to become, you know, hardcore right-wing fundamentalists. These guys just massacred a bunch of kids in this town because they were devil worshippers, because they were members of the Yazidi tribe, which believes in the peacock god instead of Allah. The UN Children's Agency, this uh, the BBC writes, the UN Children's Agency has expressed extreme concern, in quotes, this is the UN's phrase, over reports that 40 children from Iraq's Yazidi minority died after an offensive by jihadists. The UNICEF reports the children died as a direct consequence of violence, displacement, and dehydration over the past two days. Thousands of Yazidis fled into the mountains after the Islamic State, ISIS, overran the town of Sinjar on Sunday. Yazidis follow an ancient faith that the jihadis condemn as devil worship. And they go on to say 25,000 children are now stranded in the mountains, hiding out from ISIS who wants to kill them as devil worshipers. This is, this is what George Bush unleashed on these people? I mean, you know, the, the, the president, President Obama, a couple of days ago said, well, yeah, we, you know, we, we, we tortured, some of our folks tortured people. But we're not going to hold them to account. Okay. Well, not okay, actually. But I think that, frankly, a much larger crime was just the war itself. We destabilized an entire region of the world. Not to mention devastating a country. And the consequences of that are still ongoing and getting worse and worse. And George W. Bush apparently has taken to painting now in his retirement. When perhaps he should be giving testimony about whose idea was this and why and how. And it, tell, tell us about the project for New American Century that your brother signed the letter in 1998 to Bill Clinton demanding that he overthrow Saddam Hussein and take Iraq. That it would take a Pearl Harbor-like event to get the American people behind us on this?
George W. Bush, who told his biographer, Mickey Herskowitz, Herskowitz uh, who was writing a charge to keep uh, uh, Bush's autobiography that came out before the election. Herskowitz wrote the first draft. He, it wasn't sucky up enough, so they hired a second writer. But he has hundreds of hours of tape of, of interviews with George W. Bush. And George Bush, W. Bush basically told him, you know, if I get a chance to invade Iraq, this was in 1999. If I get a chance to evade Iraq, I'm not going to waste that opportunity like my dad did. You know, keep in mind, Bush Sr. had a 100-hour 100, 100 war, a little over three-day war in Iraq, or actually in, in Kuwait, to drive the Iraqis out. And there were voices back then saying, you know, you should go all the way to Baghdad and take out Saddam. And Dick Cheney came out and said taking out Saddam would be a huge mistake because we'd have this country and who knows what we're, you know, what are you going to do with it? And then you got the Kurds in the north, you know, who would like to join the Kurds in Turkey, and that becomes a problem for Turkey's security. And you've got the Sunnis in the, in the uh, east or west. I, I have to go back. I think it's the west. Yeah. Yeah, the west over by Syria. And, and you've got the Shia in the east. And, you know, what are you going to do with these different people in these different regions? And, you know, uh, no, we'll just we'll leave this. Uh, you know, Ch Cheney was actually reasonable when he was, what was he, Secretary of Defense? Or he was, yeah, in the cabinet of George Herbert Walker Bush. But then when he became uh, surrogate president, vice president, and he... And he was, you know, he was put in, in charge of this energy commission. And they sat down and said, hey, you know, where's the cheapest oil in the world? It turns out it's in Iraq. And it's like the second largest national source of oil in the world in Iraq. And now these children, 25,000 children hiding in the desert or hiding in the forests because 40 of them were slaughtered by these guys because they're practicing devil worship, you know, because they, they believe in the peacock god. You're listening to the Tom Hartman Program. Call 866-987-THOM. Excuse me, the peacock feather god. And then we've got people in this country saying, oh yeah, we should merge religion and government. Really? 